Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Keck and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Morning. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interests supersede self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're going to show you what you actually had before and after. Okay. okay. This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome at all? No, I don't. This is not a movie. This is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn. There's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really need. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. Hi, my name is Samuel Guzman. I am a, a second year neuropathology fellow here at USC. The neuropathology is a study of the brain from the a neurosurgical oncology perspective. Also, we cover epilepsy, neuromuscular, and neurodegeneration, eye pathology, as well as any other neuromuscular issue that could be taking place in the person's body. So we tend to go uh, further in depth than um, the general pathology to really kind of understand the mechanisms that are happening. So with that, the hope is to be able to uh, influence and uh, provide a larger research foundation for patients in the future. The Neuropathology Fellowship allows fellows to rotate through uh, five different uh, facilities and programs. So we rotate through the Keck Medical Center of USC, uh, LAC USC, Children's Hospital Los Angeles, the Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, and the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner's Office. And so with that, uh, th this offers a different perspective. Uh, of neuropathology from each vantage point. So each place that we rotate, uh, they have a different patient population, different diseases are prevalent there. So, and with the different diseases, they have different causes. So we, we are able to um, learn from all the different settings and see the goals as well as the goals of therapy and work with the uh, clinical teams to help um, provide more information that could be needed to help the patient in the future. There's a big difference between uh, adult um, neuro-oncology and adult tumors in the brain as well as uh, pediatric tumors. So even though they can look very similar, have similar names, we're finding that there's a lot of uh, differences in the DNA themselves. Back in the last 20 years, there's been a big push for molecular diagnosis to kind of give more additional information that's more personalized for each patient. Uh, prior to that, it was more so the histology, what we see in the microscope. But now we make a more integrated diagnosis that uh, in involves um, histology, the basics, as well as involving um, molecular next generation sequencing, uh, fish analysis, and methylation studies to understand what's driving the malignancy and hopefully provide more targets for the clinical team so they can give uh, treatment regimens that are more specific and hopefully more helpful for the patients. One thing that we do on a weekly basis is um, we help work with the various uh, clinical teams, so the neurologist at whichever uh, center that I tend to be rotating at. At that time, we will set up uh, tumor boards and these multidisciplinary conferences. It's usually an opportunity for the uh, neurosurgeons the, and the neurologists to be in a room with us, and we show them what we found, what the goal is for the diagnosis, and we help look up any uh, relevant data in the literature that will help support um, the behavior of the neoplasm as a result. So we may find a, a unique mutation, or we may find something that is pretty common, and with that, maybe the, the clinician will say, all right, we could do a more aggressive treatment uh, regimen, give radiation and, and so forth, or maybe this neoplasm isn't as bad as we think, so we can just uh, wait and see for a bit. And so um, we run these at each institution, and um, if I'm in, in the adult hospitals, I run them there as well. We're kind of the doctors behind the scenes, and the, the uh, the, the patient won't really uh, know that we're ever there or our impact. So for instance, in the for, uh, neurosurgical cases, when the neurosurgeon is in the room operating, we are usually doing frozen sections, so meaning the surgeon saw something of interest while he was doing the, um, 
doing the surgery and resection. And so he will take a small piece, millimeters, and he'll send it to us, and we'll do a rapid uh, frozen section. This is within 15 minutes, we put on a slide, microscopic slide, and we evaluate uh, what the lesion was. And then after that, we can call the surgeon back or go into the room with him and tell him, okay, so we think it's this kind of neoplasm. And so based on that, he will either take more uh, tumor out or if we tell him it's something that could be treated with, um, with uh, steroids or something else, then he will stop the procedure. We're kind of like his eyes at times in the operating room. So we're involved in many steps along the way. It's just we are, um, the people we speak with most are the other doctors. What we do is we kind of mine the charts in order to kind of get as much information about the patient as possible. So as we are not um, technicians, our job, we're also physicians. So we, our job is to integrate everything we found and provide a, a, a medical a diagnosis. So if we see that the patient is um, a, a three-year-old who's having trouble looking up, we'll ha have an idea of where the uh, malignancy could be. If all of a sudden they are having difficulty speaking, then we'll have an idea where the lesion could be. And this, um, it, it could be um, emotional when you see, start seeing it happen in infants and throughout the age spectrum. But for me, I, it always hits me when it's an uh, infant. And from there, you know, you have to kind of understand that we're going to do something that's going to be really helpful for the patient. We're trying to give them the most personalized uh, medicine possible. So this um, person that's on the table could benefit from all of the information that we know, that the clinical teams know, and have a, the best outcome possible. The ADRC program is a federally funded program that's been running here since the 1980s with Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller is the uh, neuropathologist, and we have a large team of uh, clinical neurologists that work with us. So they have uh, patients that they've been following for sometimes 30 years that have uh, signs of Alzheimer's disease or they have dementia. So uh, these patients then uh, decide that they want to donate their uh, brain to science after they pass. So when this happens, um, after the patient passes, we will get the patient's brain and we'll be able to uh, uh, dissect and analyze the brain from there and be able to put a more defined diagnosis on the, on the, um, on the patient so have a better understanding of why they're having those symptoms. And then after, after that, sometimes we even apply uh, molecular techniques to even further characterize it in the DNA. The goal is to narrowly define the, the disease process and hopefully lay out the mechanism that's happening in this patient. And because the overarching goal of the ADRC program is to build a database that has 40 years worth of cases that people can then do research on. And so and with this, uh, we can hopefully pro make um, therapies in the future, new ways to diagnose, and um, one day, you know, even cure. And so these, uh, dementia is a, like an umbrella term that, that involves a lot of uh, neurodegenerative processes. So uh, Parkinson's, Lewy body dementia, Alzheimer's. So all of these have different ways that they work. So we really need to characterize the mechanism for each and therefore we can find targets for therapy. At Children's Hospital Los Angeles, we get to work with Dr. Gillis, who's a pioneer in the field of neurodevelopmental research. So the tumors and the lesions and so forth are different than they would be in the adult population. And so the drivers are different, the prognosis is different. Now, as of 2016, the new World Health Organization Neuropath book it now involves a lot of molecular techniques. But since then, there's been a lot of research that's been done and we've found even more uh, molecular changes that can be targets. And so there's gonna be a new book coming out um, soon and it will help um, better define the differences between the two populations. And with that, we kind of get more exposure to these differences. And then for the Neuropathology Fellow, it's helpful for us to 
then be able to go out into the world and work as faculty, understanding both well. And uh, Children's Hospital Essentials also they work with the Center of Personalized Medicine. So at this laboratory, they have um, the new techniques are being utilized, such as uh, next generation sequencing and fish analysis. Now with the uh, new incorporation of uh, methylation studies to characterize the uh, neoplasm in a way that's personalized for the patient. The goal with uh, neuropathology now is to very narrowly define and diagnose each case as close as possible. So we have an integrated diagnosis, meaning we have the histology, the classic way it's diagnosed, but also it's going to go into the molecular and the DNA. And then with that, we can give a, a treatment that could be very different from another person who has a similar looking tumor and placement and so forth. So you, the patient will get the medication that's best for them and offers them the best chance. As a result of us working at so many uh, facilities and working with so many different programs, we get to, we have exposure to a lot more rare diagnoses. And uh, as a result of our tools that we can, wait, we have the luxury of being able to utilize, we get um, a lot of different changes in the DNA that will then allow us to do more studies, group these tumors, group these malignancies by this and that, and be able to develop cohorts so we can do research. And so there's a lot of those opportunities in various places, the Keck Medical Center at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and so forth, that just a large amount of information to be gone through. And this could help advance the, um, uh, the field of neuropathology. So we can then say that uh, tell our colleagues this throughout the, the world. Our fellowship program has two years. Um, so in, for neuropathology, there's traditionally um, two fellows, so one uh, junior, one senior. And so the, it's not, um, neuropathology takes a, a type of person who is interested in research a bit more. It takes a, uh, a person who's interested in working with and making a more integrated diagnosis that aren't just um, recognition. It's a way to kind of understand and advance the science. Because as opposed to um, other types of um, pathology medicine, the, the outcomes for um, neuro-oncology and so forth aren't always the best in that the survivability. So lots of changes need to occur in order to be at the forefront to push the science forward so we can also have uh, really good outcomes as it would in the rest of the body. There, in other portions of the body, you could um, remove the organ. So in some places, you can remove the uh, portion of that organ. Um, for, for the neoplasm, you can't do that in the brain. You have to, it's, it's, a, it's a really valuable real estate. The program at USC for the Neuropathology Fellow is different than other places in that in the other centers, you will typically just work at the adult hospital and maybe have to take a, a month or maximum for pediatric uh, uh, neuropathology. Here, we have so many other avenues to learn from you're spending uh, many months at the Children's Hospital Los Angeles, one of the top five children's hospitals in the country, and you're working with a renowned uh, pathologist. And then we also have the medical examiner's office um, nearby next door. So you get to see, um, we have a lot more exposure than other, other institutions would have. So your education here is more well-rounded, as well as uh, the ADRC program for Alzheimer's is not um, in every institution. So we really have a breadth of information, data, and so forth that can be looked at and, um, and learned from by the Neuropathology Fellow. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training. Whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.